It's a large, it's a large topic. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very amorphous, uh, uh, gelatinous sort of field. And I think we all had very different perspectives on, on, on what the state of the field was and what the use of pop culture could be, whether it's the production of popular culture, the way popular culture infuses a sense of place and time in, in, in history, um, the very specific elements of popular culture, uh, in terms of you know how a specific area progresses and grows or doesn't, so, so we were all over the map. But I think it was a really rich discussion. Right. Well, what can we learn by studying pop culture now? Well, that's what we were talking about. <laughs> uh, my argument was I went back to Raymond Williams, uh, the uh, great British uh, Marxist uh, uh, theoretician who, who who coined the term the structure of feeling, and uh, my suggestion was that in thinking about how popular culture works, that as historians, culture provides an inroad into the way a culture feels at a given moment, with the structure and with the, with, with the, with the uh, realm of possible feelings and the limits of feelings are at any given time. It's sort of trying to trying to bring together political economy and actually the sensibility of who we are as a people at a given moment. What can we learn from it? <laughs> what can we learn from it? Um, well, I, I mean, it, there's there are people who are interested in learning about the culture itself, the cultural productions itself. So there's some people who really are interested in how country music, for instance, is produced, what its history is, and they want to use that for their own sort of appreciation. Um, I'm interested in in the writing of history, sort of big history, the, the big questions of history, and what this allows us to, to, to get into, to penetrate, in ways we can't otherwise. Um, and so, um, as historians, uh, you know, we might, I might be able to talk about strike rates or politics or congressional maneuvering or whatever, but what a film or a song that is ancillary to that opens up, sort of well, yeah. reveals kind of the heart of that moment in some ways. Give us an example. What is it uh, that you can point to in the <coughs> pop culture of today uh -huh. that provides a, a beam of light on uh -huh. who we are? Sure. Um, well, I mean, if, I think if you if you look at the TV shows today, they, they tend to be, say, you know, Mad Men or Game of Thrones. We talked a little bit about that today, things like this. That um, they are reflections of this sort of, well, you can go all the way back to sort of Glen Gary, Glen Ross and Wall Street. The, you know, the, 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 this, this sort of hyper-capitalist, authoritarian kind of culture. And, and that's what people are ready to see reflected back at them, I think. You know? I mean, it's very interesting that we have this, we're all involved in Mad Men. This, this deeply kind of corporate, patriarchal revivalism. Um, and I think uh, it's, it's part of what we see around us. There's this and mixture. it's also a critique, right? So it's... We're in it, we're critical of it, we don't know how to escape it, um, and so you, you end up in this sort of love-hate cycle uh, on this stuff, you know, and, and I think it's, it's, it's it, that's what's interesting to me about it, is it moves people. People are motivated by popular culture. In a way, they may not be motivated by a political piece of legislation. Uh, you know, if you cancel one of those things, I mean, people are going to go nuts. If Obamacare makes it or doesn't, which is going to have a much bigger material impact on people's lives, uh, uh, they may not get as uh, worked up. So it's, it's sort of an interesting uh, paradox, I think. Very good. Thank you so much. Sure.